Hey guys, GWS here. Here to just talk about Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Cortez, if you will. Um, and just my thoughts and opinions on her in general. Because she's, like, everywhere in the news right now, and she she's, um, you know, feuding with Ben Shapiro, and I just thought I'd just give my two cents on her, just what I think, because it's like... First of all, who is she? Um, she's the one who beat somebody named Joe Crowley, um, Crowley, however you pronounce it, um, where he was basically the runner-up to Nancy Pelosi in terms of being the leading um, Democrat in the House of Representatives. And she beat him in a dramatic upset in the Democratic primary of, um, I forgot what district it was, but it's in Queens, New York. Um, and what was amazing was the way she did it. And, you know, say what you want about her, but the fact is this, is that her campaign, you know, busted its rear end, you know, knocked on doors, um, she got her name out there, she got her word out there, she had nothing to work with, she didn't have any, um, big donors, not much, she was outspent, what was it, like 10 to 1, it was some huge margin, um, and she basically came just like, out of nowhere, like, literally, what was it, like a bartender, um, and she just decides she's gonna run against this super powerful guy, and beat him, and get endorsed by, um, Justice Democrats. Now, that's the way politics should be done, and I do like that. I do like that, it, and to a certain extent, I could see, if this is who the people of Queens really wanted, um, yeah, absolutely. But, um, we got a couple problems here. Um, number one, the election went mostly as it should, but here's the big problem, and th this is kind of what has killed her, um, she was never tested, because Joe Crowley, um, he ran ads, but he never debated her. He didn't get out there and spread the word in his district. And that's important, because when you get up on that debate stage, you know, all of a sudden, all your prepared speeches all your stuff, like, you, you, before, you're just talking to your own crowd, to your own base, trying to fire them up, or trying to turn people against, um, the opponent, trying to knock off his base, trying to win moderates over, um, there's, there's a lot of things, right? Um, and that's important to, you know, th then when you get on that debate stage, like, all that goes out the window. Now, all of a sudden, it's, it's about the moderators, and it, more importantly, the debates are one lost on the exchanges between the candidates themselves, because it's the only time during the process of an election that you ever get to hear them talk directly to each other. They have to refute each other's arguments, um, battle each other's theories, either smash them into oblivion or you know, worst case scenario, they end up talking past each other, but you get a sense of why you're supporting the candidate you do, why you hold the positions you do. When you debate, that kind of stuff is reinforced, and that's important, but a debate never happened, and so the debate never happened, and then, you know, because Joe Crowley didn't even try, what happened was you had a super low turnout, like, you know, out of the the 500,000 whatever people in the district, 450 to 500,000, um, about, um, I think it's like 40,000 people, 45,000 people showed up to vote, 
Actually, no, it was less than that. It was, I believe it was 27,000 total people voted in that primary. Ocasio-Cortez got 17,000 votes. I'm pretty sure that was the tally. So it's like you got less than 5% of people and, you know, a little over half of those voted for her. So it was about like 3% of people in that district ended up going and voting for her. And see, so it's like that, that kind of low turnout, first of all, that is very disturbing to have that low of a turnout. Um, but it was good in her case, because I guarantee you, a lot, most of those people who showed up to vote for her, um, they got a knock on that door, either from her or from maybe she had surrogates. I'm not sure specifically what her campaign strategy was, um, but I know it was grassroots, and you know that part of it was right, but that kind of turnout's disturbing, the debates are disturbing, and then all of a sudden... Now, you have somebody who's not been tested, who's never held an office, who has no executive experience. Um, she has a bachelor's in economics. That's about all she has going for her in terms of her um, general knowledge. She goes out there and just immediately, she just bombs interview after interview. And not even the big interviews. Like, um, there was one... I don't even know how I'd pull it up, but there was one where she was being interviewed on the streets, and it's just like, she looks, she looks very lost, and like she's constantly searching for what she has to say, because she does not have the one thing that she's going to need, and this is going to kill her. She does not have the body of knowledge to hold the position she holds. And I'm not of the opinion that you have to know a lot to be a congressman. You don't. Like, you look at what a lot of people... Like, you look at um, Hank Johnson of Georgia. You know, asking, is Guam going to tip over because it's overpopulated? No, you got idiots like that. But even people like that, they have a body of knowledge that they can go to where they can at least answer the basic questions. They can, they can try and justify... Um, what they're saying. And that's based on that body of knowledge. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez does not have that knowledge. Not even close. to Even the small amount of knowledge you'd need to be a congressman. Even on economic issues. And her degree is in economics. And this is where she completely loses it. Like, she was doing a radio interview. Um... It's like Rick and Morty or something. I, I can't remember what it was, but um, she's doing a radio interview, and it's like she's saying stuff like um, 40% of people um, make less than $30,000 a year or something, um, which is wrong on so many levels. Because first of all, the numbers she used, I believe she said, um, it's like, 40 million people, she, she's saying like 40 million people, that's 5% of the U.S. population, something like that. It was a number where the United States would have to have about um, just under 500,000 people to satisfy that condition. And it's just, she doesn't understand basic economics. She doesn't understand her own rhetoric. Like, she hears numbers from other people, like maybe from fellow Justice Democrats, but she doesn't know how to square those numbers with, um, like, into a coherent picture of the U.S. economy. And even from her answers, like, you can look up her answers, it doesn't even sound like she has a basic idea of what economic, her economic theory specifically would be. And see, this is starting to become true for a lot of these identified democratic socialists. 
because you had the same thing with Corey Bush when um, when Kyle did the thing on Fox News. They showed the thing of Corey Bush being completely unable to identify her terms, identify specifically what her policy is, what her ideal policy is, like basically how she sees the country in terms of like specific tax rates, like what's fair, what's not. How do you define what a fair share means? And these people come on and they're not even aware of basic economic factors. And see, the thing is, is like, it's not that there's no economic basis behind some of these ideas. Like, there's a lot of smart people who hold these ideas that the government should um, be more of a manager of um, productivity, control the means of production, if you will. And it, there are a lot of smart justifications because people understand stuff like like um, monetary velocity and and you know, even like your amateurish terms like demand and supply side economics, which they aren't discussed as those specific things in the literature, but it's, um, you know, ideas that are out there. They represent theories of how to do things, and, and these theories are built on um, either left-wing or right-wing um, economic principles, whether you believe in a more Keynesian model or a let's say fair model. And it, it, there are underlying theories, but it doesn't even sound like Ocasio-Cortez. Like, like if you, you know, asked her, like, what proportion and in what situations you would apply Keynesian economics versus, let's say, fair free markets, um, she'd probably give you a blank. And see, the media is not even going to go into those complex theories because it's like, like I said, like to be a congressman, you don't even have to be that smart. Like, like, just basic things like that, you wouldn't even have to know necessarily. You just probably have to know just basic what the terms are and what they mean, and then you kind of talk your way around it, even though you don't know what the hell you're talking about. Because that's what you'll see politicians do quite often when they get on the shows and they're asked about their economic theories. But she has no economic theory. It's All of it just seems like it's given to her. And it's stuff, a random hodgepodge of stuff that appeals to her um, and has always appealed to her. And she's never had it challenged. Like, she thinks, oh, this is a great idea. You know, everybody in my district, everybody in Queens is talking about it. You know, where I bartend or, you know, where I've worked, like, you know, this is this is what people want. This is, and it never gets challenged. And, and, and I guess here's the thing. Here, here's the one final thing. Um, I think she has the mindset to be able to improve, basically. You know, I think she has that hard-working attitude. Like, to campaign like she did, you have to have, you know... You know, you have to have some kind of workmanship attitude deep down inside. You know, because, you know, to not just go halfway and say, I tried, or say, you know, just give enough effort and say, you know, you know, I was there, but to actually go and try to win the thing. You know, and even when Kyle was first talking about her, I literally laughed her off, like, you know, really, her, you know, somebody like that is going to challenge, um, a powerful Democrat, you know, my ass, she's going to get like 1% of the vote, you know, and I, I ate those words, 
So it's like, there's some part of her that's a hard worker, and she's capable, but what I fear is that her base is going to hold her down so much from learning that it it's just it's not going to happen and reality is is that she's just going to look so dumb and then she's going to be knocked out of office by somebody probably um Crowley within you know in the next primary you know, and that's even assuming she could win a general. Like, imagine if a Republican challenges her. Like, I don't know when the Republican primary is held or if there's even one that's going to contest her in that district. You know, and that's a heavy Democrat district. That's going to be so hard for any Republican to win. But just imagine if somebody challenged her. Like, you know... We're going to get those two, Republican and her, in a debate. Like, I'm not even convinced that she would win against a Republican if she debated. Like, she may have to fight harder. But I just, my prediction is, you know, she's going to win in November easily. And she's going to be challenged and she's going to be thrown out because... All the stuff she says in the next couple years, all this democratic socialist stuff, like, it's going to come back around her, and the, the, um, it's going to be put on her qualifications. Like, that's what's going to be held on trial, and she's not going to win in an election, especially when she looks as bad as she's looked against, um, you know, Shapiro on that interview, how she responds to criticism, how she responds to, to political satire of her very, very thin skin. Um, just how she fumbles around an interview and just barely gets through it. It's like... And again, I encourage you, listen to the interview, because it's not just about the specifics, the specific numbers that she misquotes and all that. Just listen to her demeanor and listen to it carefully. She, It's like somebody who can't swim barely keeping their head above water. She, like, It's just finding the words to get through a certain thing stuttering your way through, um, you know, false starts and all these little conversational things that are examples of people who aren't sure of what they want to say or how to put it because they haven't gone through this in their own minds. And, and that's that's basically what she is. She's just barely keeping her head above water, and it's only a matter of time. Because she's been on friendly outfit, friendly stuff. Like, imagine her, like, say, on Joe Rogan. Rogan will absolutely grill her. You know, and he's not even a right winger, but he grills everybody. And he's gotten, you know, credit to him. He's gotten people like Steven Crowder to stutter their way through because they can't answer for their own positions. And he presses everybody. Like, imagine her on Joe Rogan. She might just walk off the set within 15 minutes, like after he goes through all the, the feel-good stuff, and then he starts pressing her on her opinions. Just imagine. It's And it's only a matter of time before you get somebody like that who's going to press her, and she's, she's going to lose it. She's going to get lost. And to me, I feel bad for her that she is in this because she should not have won that primary. Given the fact that Crowley is, you know, just a corrupt Democrat. But 
you know, you put Crowley in those interviews, you know, he'll be able to um, explain clearly to the people what his positions are, why his positions are the way they are, and he understands, like, the methods of, you know, attack and defending himself, and he goes for it, and uh, in one sense... I guess um, that kind of makes it worse, but in another sense, it's just like in one sense it's corrupt, but in another sense it's like it's kind of what you need. Like you need somebody who's able to defend themselves. Anyhow, this has gone on long enough, and you know that's just my opinion on um, AOC. Thanks for listening, guys, and God bless.